Hello everyone, I'm Esmeralda Padilla Gold and welcome to Vegas Vibes. On Vegas Vibes, I'll be featuring amazingly talented people from many walks of life who contribute to making Las Vegas a unique global brand. And on that note, I, we have here with us Mr. Leon Patillo, mm -hmm. an accomplished singer, songwriter, and the former lead vocalist of the Latin music and rock band called Santana, formed by the Mexican-American guitarist Carla Santana. Hello, hey, Mr. Patillo. How are you? How's everything? Good, I'm good. Very, we're very delighted to have you in Vegas Vice. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you again. <laughs> well, I'm very curious yeah. to find out how did you start singing? Well, you know, uh, I was in, born and raised in San Francisco. So I had a grammar school teacher that was really curious about each child's gift. And so she would bring a different apparatus and put it down in front of a child each day. One day she came in and put this cardboard down in front of me and had piano keys painted on it. And so I was watching her play the piano and I was doing the same things that she was doing. Mm. And so from that, she was able to discover that I had talent. So she left the class, called my mama and said, start this boy in music. And so I get home from school and uh, my mama said, your teacher called today. I said, oh, that's not good. <laughs> and then come to find that uh, she shared with me I had talent. I didn't know what that was, but uh, I figured, well, they knew what they were talking about. And so the next thing I knew, there's a big piano came to my house. We pushed it up by the window there and I started learning. Da -da 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 -da. And um, it was terrible because all my friends were outside playing football. So I could watch the football going past the window. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, but after a couple of months, those same kids came in the house and heard me play and thought it was amazing. So, they were amused by what yes, you were doing, yes, music, of yes. course. So when I fell in love with, with entertainment right at that point. <laughs> so not in your family? Is it Nobody in my family really, it, it, well, they could sing a little bit, but no one took it on as a professional uh, thing. So actually, my mother didn't even think I was gonna do anything big. So she, had, she told me, she said, you should take another, um, something else in school. And so instead of just the music, you should take another curriculum. So I did, I took accounting. And my first day on the job, I said, I couldn't even play my pencils. You know, they mm -hmm. were so quiet and they, everybody was, they'd look at, if I would start to hum a song, everybody would look at me. And I said, what are they looking at? And so it just, after a couple of weeks, I just, I couldn't take it, so I left. And funny enough, two weeks after that, Carlos Santana calls and asked me to be lead vocalist in the So group. you were chosen. <laughs> That's, actually, I, I was curious. How yeah. did you get into the band? Like Yeah, it was something that's, uh, there's a guy on 60 Minutes, you may have seen it uh, a few years ago, a guy named Marcus who was homeless, and Carlos went and you know, kind of loved on him a little bit. And so Marcus actually was the one that was responsible for me being in a group, because he took, in those days, he took up uh, a tape of me singing uh, up to Carlos' house. Carlos. Yeah. And Carlos said, man, I like the guy's voice. And So uh, next thing I know, I'm getting a call from Carlos asking me to come to uh, Mill Valley. So just and from that tape? Just from that tape. And it's funny, because when I come, I came, knocked on his door, and a girl named Debbie opened the door, and Debbie uh, was a schoolmate of mine. And I was thinking, wow, Debbie's the maid. I said, this is great. She made it to be a maid for Carlos Santana. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And so I'm glad I didn't say it because as soon as Carlos came up and hugged me from behind, he said, hey, Leon. I said, hey. He said, you met my wife? <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, man. I'm glad I didn't say maid. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So uh, anyway, the next thing I know, he took me downstairs and, and we started singing all the songs, Black Magic Woman and Oh, You Come Over, and Gotta Change Your Evil Ways. And, he said, okay, you're going to be your next lead vocalist and we're going to go and all you've been over toured, the world. Yeah, and you toured the world with him. Yeah. Uh, how, how was that like? It was really exciting. I mean, I, I had, living in San Francisco, I'd only been down to L.A. and then up to Tahoe, which is about four hours north. I had never been out of that area. And so when he said, like, Japan, I said, Japan? We're going to Japan? <laughs> wow. And so I did we speak English over there? Do they understand the songs? They said, yeah, they understand. And when we got to Japan, it was, I think that was the life change, one of the life changes for me, um, only because they, the people are so humble. You know, when we used to say hello to them, they're bowing at oh, you. Very and, respectful. And, oh. Very respectful. So I and then else. when we do concerts, uh, we get to our last song, and they, they 
in those days, they didn't like clap along with the song. They'd let the whole song go past and at the end they they clap like that <laughs> and then they stop again. And then when it was the last song, um, they would start crying because they, they would know that this is, they wouldn't see us for another year and a half or so. And it was very touching to me. I just thought uh, this is a country that we need to take an injection from Asian people <laughs> and just inject everybody else. Is that else. why you married someone from Asia? <laughs> <laughs> I married a Filipino woman, man. I, I had a black magic woman. Now I got a, she's a Catholic girl, so I, I, I call her a born again woman. <laughs> so I re, have redone the song. <laughs> and uh, yeah, with fact, we just got back from the Philippines, uh, Renee and I, and uh, uh, she hasn't been home in 35 years. So it was, oh my God, was that a tremendous experience? Because you know how it is for anybody that's not Asian, they, you just feel like a king. They make you feel and feed you. Oh my God, I had to look, I had to come back and start working out again. <laughs> they fed You're me in so perfect good. shape. No, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because I've been working out. <laughs> but uh, one of the beautiful things I, I think I liked about her country, the very last day. Where I came I, from. You came from yes, the Yes, I'm originally from the Philippines. Get out of here. Yes, born and raised. Yeah? Oh Manila. my goodness. What, what part? Manila. Manila, huh? Yeah, but my parents are from Bulacan. Okay, well we came into Clark. Uh, we didn't. We, I didn't get down that far to see Manila, but I, we came into Clark County, and so that's where we kind of hung out. Uh, but the, the last day, Renee was spending time with her family, so I went down to the local mall about nine o'clock in the morning, and the mall was full of people. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> it doesn't open until ten. I, th I knew you could have you know breakfast down there early, and I was wondering where did all these people come from. They were having mass in a public mall. I was blown away. I was like, this this will never happen in the States. Yeah, but those people just have such a, a unity about themselves, you know? And uh, you, I really have to take my hat off. You know, like I said, I wish we could inject the whole rest of the world with what you guys have as uh, a culture. It just Thank We you. would be a much closer people. And you do that. humanitarian work, right, in the Philippines? You help street children. Yeah, we. I didn't do as much this time. Uh, I sang mainly for her family, because <laughs> after 35 years, uh, you know, she was the, like they should have had a marching band <laughs> when she came home, because she hadn't seen people since grammar school and high school and college. So it was just like I just got swarmed into you know her world when I was there. But uh, yeah, we we do humanitarian work. We are going to start now helping some of the kids. Because you're a part of a ministry, or you yes. go around the streets helping. Yes, yes. When we moved here to Vegas six years ago, um, actually going back, mom and dad had foster kids in the home. Mm -hmm. So when I got out of Santana, I thought that would be a neat thing to do, just to follow that tradition. Come to find it. You know, I couldn't keep kids in my home because we're always gone. Uh, my wife, uh, sister, brought us a, uh, a bonsai plant one time, and we were gone for a few weeks. We came back, it was dead. <laughs> so I can't keep nothing in the house. But I knew that I could help to maybe steer some kids toward mm -hmm. uh, some parents that really would like to have kids. So we have, uh, I can't even imagine the number now, thousands of kids uh, in, in the home because we're working with this foster homes organization. Moved here, found that you guys have the highest dropout rate in the whole country is here in Vegas. So I said, wow, I said, we got to throw our arms around these kids. So that's what we've been doing the last six years is just uh, public schools, charter schools, a few private schools we've been um, helping because they don't have any arts programs anymore. So now we're kind of helping to uh, steer them toward Music. Yeah, what they what they want and to do, sing and dance and, and play and that sort of thing. So Being that said, so do you teach? You know, I guess I am teaching. I guess I am teaching because I sat down with the kids and I asked them, I said, do you guys feel valuable at all with the special gift? You, they haven't said this. No, we don't feel valuable. I said, do you feel like if you went to go do something in a concert, they'd pay you $5? Wow, wow. $5. I said, what if they paid you $10? Wow, ten dollars! Ooh, and somebody said, "I think I could be worth a hundred dollars." And the whole class went, "Wow!" And I told him, "I said, you know how much you guys are worth? You're worth forty-four thousand dollars." They said, "No." And so I made them go back and add up from their parents and when she was when they were in the belly and all the way, you know, diapers and how much food and the doctors and the gas and mm -hmm. the cars and the house and everything. How much that cost over eleven years? That's forty four thousand dollars. I said, in this economy, that's eighty eight thousand dollars. 
And so the, the custom is we work with uh, Subaru uh, here in the city. Uh, they let us have all our contests there. And so Renee has all have all the parents in one room and I have the kids in the other. So I told him, I said, as soon as I get through with, with our teaching, I want you to go run and hug your parents and say, thank you, mom and dad, for spending $88,000 on <laughs> <That's> <laughs> So cute. it's just funny, you know, but, but yeah, I, I, I guess I am teaching them in a sense. I'm mentoring them on a lot of other areas as well. Yeah. So it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. So where do you see yourself now that you're uh, doing humanitarian work mm -hmm. and teaching eventually? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Where, where, what else would you like to accomplish? Because I know you've done a lot being with a band, yes. some kind of band, and all that. Well, we have. We've got. My wife and I. We kind of split in what we're doing. I have a desire to uh, do something on the strip. I have always been wanting to do like a concert or something on the strip, more inspirational type of style. Um, not nothing too heavy ch church wise, but just kind of, you know, maybe an old happy day or, mm -hmm. or I believe I could fly, you know, something like that. Songs that would, when you come in, you just would lift your spirit. Because after songs. losing all that money, <laughs> you're going to need to go someplace and get washed off and, and get your spirit kind of pumped back up. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just thought that, you know, that would be a neat thing. And then my wife is doing an online business. Uh, and it's just a, a neat thing. So we kind of both together are kind of following our passions. I would like to ask who amongst the uh, Las Vegas iconic celebrities, incredible musicians, great songwriters, who has a great influence on you? I guess, it, and it's probably going to sound a little cheesy, but, uh, but Carlos Santana, Carlos Santana is definitely, uh, only because I've been around him all these years, he's got just a, a different kind of he's heart a for a musician. Yeah. Uh, I've never seen, you know, like if, if we're all going to, if he's going to fly first class, uh, we're all going to fly mm. first class. If he, we're all going to do coach, we're all going He's not going to be a first class and we're in coach. And he's just, at, we used to, back in the day, <laughs> we even used to travel in station wagons because a lot of times the fans would follow anything that looks like a limo. So we have one limo that would be a diversion. And so we have the limo kind of in the back and the kind of station wagons up in front. We go one direction, limo go this way, all the fans are following the limo. So we always have had a kind of a low key kind of life and uh, based on Carlos Santana's heart. But uh, he's probably one of my biggest uh, of all time. One of the greatest guitarists. Actually, I've, of all time. I've met someone who's very close to him. His really? bodyguard. Oh and yeah. And yes, he said he's, he's he has a very kind heart, and he yes. helps even helps at Three Square packing all those foods for the yes. children. Yes. So he really gives. He does. He's been helping us with our back little, to the community. Really, a little outreach too. Yeah, neat guy. Yeah. Well, I wish we had more time. But, uh, <laughs> I know. Sorry, I talk so much. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you just don't have enough time. But I would like to ask you, uh, what word of wisdom or piece of advice would you give to people who aspire to do what you do? Well, I think that if you can follow your passion, you know, whatever that thing is, if it's if it's music, that's great. If it's if you want to be a doctor, that's great too. You just kind of got to follow that road that seems more innate for you because a lot of times people will follow other people. The only time I've seen that work is like Engelbert Humperdinck and Tom Jones. They kind of copied each other. Engelbert copied Tom and they will be able to be successful. But most times if you kind of be a copy, you're still kind of the second best, not the number one thing. So follow your passion. Follow the things that God has put in your heart to do. And you'll find it as you look back over your life. <clears throat> a lot of times you'll say, Okay, now this happened back in my childhood. I remember people mentioning it. Okay, this happened when I became a teenager. I remember people mentioning it. <laughs> I became 21, 25. I remember people mentioning it. People can kind of see from the outside that beautiful quality that you have. And those things are the ones you want to capitalize on. Of course, that's the thing that's going to make your life shine. It's going to make everybody else's light comes on, come on when you get around them, you know. So um, that's what I would tell everybody. Just follow that thing that is your passion. I just have one more question for you. Okay. Where can our Las Vegas and global viewers find you? Please okay. invite them. Yeah, like global. I like, <laughs> like local too, though. Uh, yeah, so all you have to do is go to Leon, L-E-O-N, Patillo, P-A-T-I-L-L-O dot org. And I'm also on Facebook, so that's that's really where all my fans kind of hang out, and that's where we talk. I'm doing some new blogs now, which are really kind of cool, and uh, 
they're just like, I, I'll get up in the morning, just something will come to my mind, and I'll get in the car, and I'll get my selfie stick. <laughs> oh, wow. And you I'll do just some share. selfies and uh, face, well, we call that. You know, Live. Yeah, yes, yes live. Sometimes I do live. Sometimes it's, it's a little scary because I know I'm going to mess up. So I usually just do put it on there and then I'll go back home and kind of cut it together. But um, anyway, yeah, so leonpatilla.org and then Facebook, you can find me there. We'll check it yeah. out. Thank you, thank you. Well, thank you so much, thank Mr. Leon God bless you. No, Good God to hang out with you, you today. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Take care now. All right. Thank you for watching Vegas Vibes. I would like to thank my wardrobe sponsor, Ad Fontaine. They're located at the Forum Shops inside Caesars Palace. A special thanks to my good friend, Miss Anna Stewart Billings of Ad Fontaine. Check out their website, www.anfontaine.com. Check me again next time as I feature another amazing, talented personality here on Vegas Vibes. I can fly. Yeah, 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 hey, how about I be here? Yeah.